Hello students, welcome again. Students, in today's lecture, we want to discuss the Jew of Malta as a Renaissance play. We are going to discuss how the characteristics of Renaissance movement which we see in England during the 15th and 16th century, how they are very well reflected by Christopher Marlowe in the Jew of Malta. We know that Christopher Marlowe has been considered as the most representative dramatist of the Elizabethan age. You know, hundreds of critics have appreciated Marlowe's contribution to English drama and poetry. As you can see on the screen, John Dryden has also said that Marlowe is the father of English tragedy and Shakespeare is the prince. So, you know, as far as tragedy is concerned, you cannot find any other dramatist in English literature who has contributed the tragedies with intense emotions and complex plot, plot constructions. Okay, now let's begin. We want to discuss the Jew of Malta as a Renaissance play. Okay, and as I told you, you know, Marlowe's tragedies have influenced hundreds of dramatists of, alien, of English literature, including William Shakespeare. Peter Wallen has also said that without Marlowe, there would have been no William Shakespeare. And this is right because, you know, William, William Shakespeare learned so many different dramatic techniques from Christopher Marlowe. And that's why you can say that had there been no Christopher Marlowe, there would have been no William Shakespeare. Okay, Shakespeare is indebted to Marlowe for his daring themes. You know, Shakespeare has uh, many times imitated or taken some themes from Marlowe's plays. He is the, the kind of psychological depth that you see in Shakespeare's drama, the same depth you find in Marlowe also. And Marlowe was the predecessor of William Shakespeare. Okay, so all these things uh, you can say William Shakespeare has learned from Christopher Marlowe's. Marlowe's all his plays, mainly he has written the four tragedies and all his plays are powerful in use of language, uh, deep themes, okay, and innovative use of blank words. And that's why he is considered as the pioneer of English drama, English tragedy, okay. And the first question that you should remember, what are the four important tragedies written by Marlowe? Then remember these four titles. Tamberline the Great, part 1 and part 2, published in 1587. Second one, oh my god, this is my favorite tragedy, Dr. Faustus, published in 1588. The Jew of Malta, published in 1589. And Edward II, published in 1592. Okay, now we are not concerned with his other tragedies, but we are more concerned with the Jew of Malta because we want to discuss this play as a Renaissance tragedy or as a Renaissance play. Okay, uh, you find lot many characteristics of Renaissance movement in this play and that is the reason why you know Marlowe has been considered as the representative dramatist. You know a representative dramatist is one who presents all qualities or characteristics of the time period in which he is living. Marlowe was living during the 16th century England and 16th century England is the period of Renaissance and that's why these Renaissance elements are evident, you know, apparent in all his four tragedies including the Jew of Malta. The first important characteristic of Renaissance is humanism. You know, if you want to uh, get into detail about what are the important features, characteristics of Renaissance, I have uploaded another video on that. 
that you can watch it later you can visit my channel later but humanism is one of the most important uh, characteristics of renaissance okay so renaissance humanism emphasized the importance of power importance of reason and intellect and individualism you know those people who were living during the 16th century in england they believed in their own power they believed in individualism okay who cares a kind of individual approach they did not they did not worry much about god about the other universe okay they believed in their own reason and their own intellect they always questioned the uh, traditional norms and this you find in the character of barabbas barabbas uh, represents the complex he is a is a complex character who wants to empower the whole world and he wants to accumulate richness of the world okay he is so ambitious and that he is so ambitious and he becomes a rich person becomes the governor also governor of malta and he has no faith for a uh, faith in god okay he has confidence in himself this is called individualism this is called humanism he uses his own cunningness and he uses his own intelligence to uh, acquire to gain the richness and power okay so that uh makes him a true renaissance hero of english drama during the elizabethan age uh, barabbas even he is not afraid of god okay he he shows his enmity against the christian people okay against the bishops against the pope uh, against the christian uh, against the church itself he had no respect for the other religion so this kind of approach is called individualism and humanism that you see in the character of barabbas in the same manner another important feature is materialism materials you know materials means this world in which we are living is a material world people are crazy after power after money after richness that is called materialism this materialism came in england because of the you know the great explorers like columbus like vasco da gama and all such people so this materialism was one of the features of renaissance which you see in the character of barabbas who is a jewish merchant okay he is driven by the desire of wealth and power and he goes uh, to accumulate richness and manip manipulate all his powers in order to gain something in his life okay this drama the jew of malta uh, portrays wealth as a source of power wealth as a source of influence you know this play shows the idea presents the idea that it is with the with the help of wealth then that you can influence anyone in this life okay so barabbas wealth enables him to manipulate and control others uh, in his life okay so that shows uh, how uh, power is corrupt uh, uh, by wealth uh, corruption and dishonesty this was also one of the features of renaissance england okay and both are connected materialism and corruption and dishonesty all these things are interconnected barabbas uh, resorts to the cunning schemes okay he tries to trap the people he tries to give the bribes okay he tries to manipulate the uh, manipulate the people around him to achieve his material goals okay he he, this, he tries disguises and finds loyalty uh with farnis actually he is not loyal to farnis farnis is the governor of malta so he tries to tries to trap the uh, governor he tries to cheat the governor he not only this with the help of his slave ithamar in this play he tries to poison uh so many nuns in the convent and in and the, uh, he also tried to poison his own daughter uh, uh, in this play so this is what this is complete dishonesty this is called corruption with the help of power with the help of money 
you are manipulating everything okay so that you see in this play moral complexity as i told you you know uh, renaissance people they did not believe in the uh, established traditional norms of religion okay they always questioned the the traditional ideas okay uh, the jew of malta this play presents morally complex world particularly through the character of barabbas he is depicted both as a victim and as a villain also he becomes the victim barabbas becomes the victim of the uh, cultural and uh, religious conflict between the christians and the jews okay so he suffers no doubt but he becomes a villain why because he wants to take revenge and in the process of taking revenge he commits so many crimes he murders so many people in his life so he becomes a villain okay uh, so the the line between what is good and what is bad is is brushed away is is erased by this character barabbas and the same thing happened in england uh, uh, because of the renaissance influence so you can say that the good and evil it was very difficult to decide which one is good and which one is bad on the one hand you can say barabbas is a bad character but on the other hand you you can also argue that barabbas was fundamentally a good character he did not harm anyone okay it was because of furnish that he laid much tax on him and that's why he wanted to take revenge furnish captures half of his property okay and that's why he decides to take revenge and tragedy takes place in his life so uh, moral complexity is one of the features another important feature second last feature is socio socio political commentary if you read all uh, plays written during the elizabethan age you find the you find that dramatists they are somehow trying to present the social and political conflicts uh, which were existing in england in their plays okay so the play of uh, elizabethan age was a commentary of the real social and political conflicts which which existed in those times in this play also you find the the uh, one of the themes as the conflict between the jews and the christians okay so religious conflict is presented in the play also the play presents the conflict between two countries political conflicts uh, between uh, between turkey and malta okay so this play you can say presents the socio political commentary in the same manner the last important feature is theatrical innovation you know uh, elizabethan age it was a period it was a time period in which the writers the authors the poets the dramatists they wanted to bring innovation in all matters you see henry howard henry howard uh, uh, brought uh, this blank verse from italy okay and he tried to innovate that in the same manner marlow tried to innovate uh, the the writing uh, writing style of poetry he innovated blank verse he perfected the use of blank verse edmund spenser also innovated a new kind of poetry spenser in stanza in the same manner shakespeare innovated the use of language so innovation in writing drama was a fashion during renaissance and in this play the jew of malta also we find innovation uh, in matters of presenting complex plots okay in matters of presenting dramatic tension okay in matters of using dialogue soliloquies and all okay uh, otherwise you know uh, traditionally there were aristotelian there was aristotelian concept of writing tragedy marlow rejects that idea uh, there were sinecan tragedies were also popular during in the beginning of the 16th century but marlow has rejected the sinecan tragedy the concept of sinecan tragedy and he has innovated drama in his own style he wrote drama in his own 
innovative style so that you find uh, in in case of use of dramatic irony in case of use of soliloquies asides complex plot construction and all you you can say that marlowe is a great innovator so all in all there are six important things which you should remember six important features of renaissance are found in this play the jew of malta okay uh, humanism materialism social and political conflicts during the time uh, much much corruption which was pre- prevalent in religion and politics loss of faith from god individualism these are the features of renaissance which are very well reflected by marlowe in this play the jew of malta and that is the reason why you know some critic i don't know who who the critic is uh, but the critic has said that while the jew of malta can be read as a complex explore, exploration of greed religious conflict and corrupting influence of power it is ultimately a quintessential renaissance play so all in all it is a perfect renaissance play you can say i hope this this video is helpful to you please do share this video among all your friends and classmates and do subscribe to this channel thank you for watching thank you